Hi, this is Jim Wynn with Wynn CRE at Kidder Matthews, and I am talking to you today here in front of the San Clemente Post Office, and we're here to find out why exactly the maintenance of the landscaping has stopped. The post office obviously is in complete disarray and does not look like what you would expect a post office, especially in San Clemente, to look like. As you can see, some work has already started and there was enough unattended landscaping that they were able to fill up this entire 40-yard trash bin full of trash. Why did it go so long without the landscaping being taken care of at the post office to the point where a 40-yard trash bin had to be filled up. Park right out in front of City Hall, about to talk to James Maxinoff to find out what's going on with the condition of the post office, which is directly across the street from City Hall. The maintenance of the landscaping obviously has not been attended to for quite some time, giving a horrible eyesore and a black eye on the city of San Clemente as far as the maintenance of such an iconic location. We even had one concerned citizen express to us her disappointment in how the city has been handling the maintenance of the post office and how it reflects on the city and may even cause liability issues. I would guess if, if, when you're coming out, you can't really see around the bend and down at the corner there. Right. You'll probably notice as you drive out. You won't. Sure you thing. Really how do you think this reflects on the city to have the post yeah. office look like That's this? Another point. That's something that really bothers me is that you think there was some pride, a little right. more pride on maybe the people who work here. You know, they just put them in the back of the list of priorities, but it's a, it's a matter of pride. It's such an embarrassing mess. Liability. Yeah. It should be a red flag for, for the mayor. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> This is the area where you used to be able to drive through and drop off your mail and in the last couple of months due to vandalism and mail being stolen they have removed the mailboxes so that convenience is no longer available to the public. We'll start with an introduction of who you are. James Maxhoff, I'm the city manager for the city of San Clemente. I'm coming up on my five year anniversary on September 29th with this great city. Congratulations. Thank you. We're very glad to have you here as our city manager. Well, it's been a good, good experience for the past five years. Beautiful. Well, one of my clients in the business park is the one that first uh, brought uh, what's going on with the post office to my attention. So we're here to find out from you today what has been going on with the post office. Well, code enforcement, uh, uh, Adam Atamian, the code enforcement manager, has been working with the local postmaster uh, over the past couple months. Uh, asking them to clean up the post office site here at the uh, Rancho San Clemente station. Uh, it's been an ongoing process. Uh, I know that the local postmaster is a little frustrated with uh, the bureaucracy that he has to deal with above him, uh, but he's been real receptive to Adam and, and the request to clean up the, the lot over there. What did the postmaster say as far as how did it get to this point? When did the lack of maintenance begin? You know, I I just brought it up about three months ago to Adam. I was driving into work one day, now that we work across the street, and I looked over there and I just thought, wow, what's going on with the post office? And I know we had the heavy winter and, and everything, and it kind of got out of control with the, with the rains and everything. And I went to Adam and I said, hey, can we talk to them about cleaning it up? And uh, he says, I've, actually, I've been talking to them. Uh, it's a federal federal property and we're just trying to get it taken care of uh, but it's like you know they're the bigger dog on the on the block so to speak and uh, that's why my next step is to go to congressman Levin and, and see if he can help when you're dealing with uh, another government entity it's a little bit different than dealing with uh, with residential or commercial interests. And uh, so while the postmaster here in town has been receptive, it's it's been more about his uh, supervisors that have been a little bit more difficult. He's actually taken bids to his supervisors, to three bids of contractors to clean it up, and they've been rejected uh, by his superiors. What mechanisms are in place that allow the city to enforce things like landscaping, whether it be for the post office or even a privately held property. 
typically code enforcement is, is how we work with them and uh, generally compliance comes pretty quick once we've given, given them a notice of correction. Um, if, if we don't get a, uh, a correction, then we can step it up with admin fines and uh, citations that way. Uh, but typically we, we try to be a little bit more accommodating to get things uh, cleaned up and done without going to the citation process. Noticed um, on the way in this morning that <clears throat> some work has already started. Who has been doing that work? The postmaster has been having some people just slowly chop away at the, at the weeds out there. Um, Adam has also talked to Ed Stewart and Ed is uh, going to be submitting a no low cost bid and uh, we're just waiting on that to see if the post office will uh, accept that. Uh, but Ed has you know, generously offered his time and service to, to clean it up. So he would do that pro bono? It sounds like it based on what Adam's told me in the past week or so. And that's just for your pure cleanup, then what about once the cleanup of the weeds is done, the landscaping itself, are they required to install any new landscaping? I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to, I'd have to check with Adam and see what the requirements, if that's a city requirement or it might be a business park uh, requirement with the association here for uh, uh, maintenance issues because the, the association has its own uh, rules for upkeep and everything. Okay. Uh, we noticed also, have been told that the post office, the post boxes themselves that used to have drive through service mm -hmm. have been removed. Can you talk to that? I can't talk to that, but I actually noticed that myself as I left work one day and, and uh, had to mail something. I thought, okay, I'll drop it off. And then I realized there's no, no boxes and I had to get out of my car and walk inside and, and drop it in, drop it off. And so I was kind of surprised at that. That was the first time I've seen a post office without drive-up boxes to leave your mail. Yeah, I had the same experience, and I asked someone inside the post office why that was, and they said it was due to vandalism. People were actually stealing mail from the post boxes. I had not heard that. Were you aware, we heard from a concerned citizen while we were out taking some photos of the post office that there were security cameras that were at one time at the post office, but she noticed that they had been removed. Are you aware of I, that at all? I did not know that there was uh, cameras or that they were removed. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that either. You know, I, I'm i waiting to see what happens with Ed Stewart yeah. and the offer that they're doing, and my next step uh, is to reach out to Congressman Levin's office and see if maybe there's some assistance that we can get from the congressman, since it is a, a federal building. Uh, federal property and he is our local federal representative for this area. Sure and the post office is in the middle of this beautiful business park. Is there anything that you think business owners could do to help apply pressure to clean up the post office? I, I think uh, talk to Bob Adams, the president of the association and, and see if Bob has any suggestions. Uh, but you know rest assured the city is trying to move this along and hopefully uh, the Good Samaritan, Ed Stewart, uh, will get some work done there. Great. Well, this came up in passing when you and I uh, met on another matter a couple of weeks ago, and I was really pleased to hear that you are already on top of it and we're taking action to try and take care of something that's so important. An iconic location. Everyone says, where are you going? Oh, 950 Negotiate. Well, it's across the street from the post office, so it's important that we maintain a, a good image for that property. Well, I, I think it's important for the post office, but I also think it's it's good for all government properties. If we're going to have a standard that we keep the commercial businesses up to, if we have a standard that we're going to keep residential uh, properties up to, then I think that uh, governmental buildings have to be kept to that same standard. We have to set that example. Yeah, I agree. And I think that goes to other levels of code as well, such as things like Title 24 and ADA. Yes. So yes. I know in the past, um, some cities have made themselves exempt from those items. I think prior to my to getting here, we actually had a program where we went through all the city facilities and, uh, and checked up on their ADA accessibility and everything. And, and right now, I'm actually working with the building official. There's been some questions raised about Vista Hermosa Sports Park and maybe there's some ADA 
issues there. So we're reviewing the plans uh, that we have based on how it was built versus the code at that time for when it was constructed to make sure that it was built to the proper standards and get the concerns addressed. Excellent. Well, thank you, James, for taking the time to talk to me today. And I'm glad that you're on top of the issue and we'll be following up with you to see how your next steps are going with the post office. Great. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to share what the city's up to. Terrific. And we're here with Adam Matamian, who is the code manager, code compliance and park ranger. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us today about the post office. My Can letter. you tell us a little bit about what's been happening with the post office? Yes, so the post office has been uh, working to uh, deal with a lot of their overgrown vegetation issues. Um, this started uh, at the end of the last grow season specifically. Um, we had received some complaints and gotten in touch with them uh, and knowing, um, knowing some of the hurdles that federal agencies uh, need to jump through to get uh, the ball moving. Um, we had, uh, we had I had reached out to the uh, San Clemente Postmaster, and, and um, they had, it had taken some time, I think a little bit more time than they wanted to, to get the landscape uh, work started. Um, and I, it's been very recently, within the last couple weeks, that they've actually been able to uh, address the, the overgrown vegetation and, and uh, weed situation on their property. Great. When did you first become aware of the, uh, I guess you just answered it, is with, during the grow season. It sounds like this has been going on longer than just this last grow season. Can you speak to that? Yes. Uh, so the city has a weed abatement program every year, which covers vacant lots and unoccupied structured properties. Uh, but it does not cover uh, this situation, which is a building where people are occupying it. Um, and so during that program every year, which uh, effectively starts around uh, April 1st, because that's when we, know, we send our notices out to people, um, a lot of residents will call and say, hey, we need, you know, there's some weed abatement issues at this property. Well, that's not, that, that program is not going to address this particular property. Uh, so every year we do reach out to the post office uh, to have them address their, their vegetation issues. Um, and this year, uh, you know, I will say it, it took a little bit longer than we wanted. Mm -hmm. I think they were looking for, a, you know, one major cleanup um, and wanted to, uh, to save resources for that. Um, otherwise, the only, the only other times we, we tend to contact them about vegetation is uh, related to line of sight issues. Uh, between uh, Amonasar and yeah. Pico, or and uh, Negocio, sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah that's <clears throat> some of the feedback that we got from someone in the community is when you come out and go to make a right on uh, Amonasar and you look up the hill, you can't see what's coming at you. So there, you've made them aware of that potential for a car accident. Yeah. Um, it, the you know, that, that's going to uh, start to affect um, uh, people driving up and down the street as soon as those the bushes were past the back of the sidewalk. And unfortunately, they just had these, these huge shrubs that were just right up to the, to the sidewalk. So it wasn't, it, you know, intended to uh, reoccur more frequently uh, there than in, uh, than in other similar similar intersections. Okay. Um, so we talked about the safety issue. Were they in violation of many city codes with, with that overgrowth? Well, overgrown vegetation and, uh, and weeds um, is, is going to be a violation year round. Um, so, so yes, if we take enforcement action, it's, a, it's about a it's about a violation that exists that we've identified, uh, and we'll provide notice uh, and warning to the to the property owner that they need to abate that violation. Okay. So they were cited and notified. I don't know that citations went out. Um, we 
in code compliance, our goal is to obtain voluntary compliance. Okay. And in all of our meetings with the post office, there was never any indication that they did not want to comply. Uh, but and and they uh, were actively engaged in uh, in addressing the situation. Granted, it was not as fast as we'd liked. It it was it was as fast as, as they could get it done. Sure. And as long as somebody's moving in that direction, we we don't we'd rather people spend money to fix the violation than to punitively fine them. Okay. That's it. Uh, the way that you guys handle that. Yeah, spend the money and time on solving the issue rather than fighting City Hall. Absolutely. And I, and I know they were getting bids because in the business park there is a landscape company and as a matter of fact just today they told me that they had provided a bid to the post office um, for the removal but not so much for what happens after the removal. So we'll get to that with a, a question for you in a minute here. Um, so how do you feel about the post office being directly across from City Hall? Do you think that uh, what are your thoughts on how that reflects on the city? I honestly don't really have much of an opinion about it uh, other than to say that uh, the city as a whole, but especially code compliance, uh, you know, we use their mail services quite frequently. Yeah. And if anything, it's very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> other than that, uh, you know, it's... Um, it's uh, no comment. Another issue that you have to deal with in the city, just coincidentally, is close proximity to yeah. you. So, uh, what comes next for them now that they've removed the current landscaping? Are they allowed to keep it barren? Uh, spoke with another property owner about a year ago. He removed trees, removed all of his landscaping, and then the, the city, in essence, forced him to landscape his property. So, how does that apply to the post office? Uh, the post office at this point in time, I'm uh, not. I'm not sure what their what their intended next steps are. We, our communications dealt entirely with uh, removing overgrown vegetation and weeds. Um, at this point, they have a few options. They can uh, replant the the uh, property as was approved in their original site plan permit for the building when it was um, initially constructed. Or they can file an application with the city's planning division to request modifications to that landscaping uh, plan palette. Uh, and that's that's what people tend to do. Uh, there's, there's only a few reasons people will uh, clear cut the property uh, in that fashion and it's either because uh, we've heard. It's either because the plants that are uh, on site at that time use way too much water, um, or something else like uh, allergies, or um, or uh, uh, there's somebody that has an allergic reaction to a particular plant. Right. Um, in this case, uh, you know, I I don't know that. Water was the number one issue. I, I think the um, I think the, the bigger issue was the maintain maintainability. If that's right. a word of the plants that they had. Were they needed? They need like monthly um, attention. Uh, and I think that that with the resources that they have, they're probably going to find a better solution with a, a drought tolerant. Landscape. Yeah, the postmaster told me that basically it's their day porter that's on site to make repairs and janitorial is the guy that tends to the landscape. And there's that's a large piece of property for one person to do on a part time basis. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. How, how long could they leave the property in its current state um, barren prior to a conversation that you would have with them to talk about what their plans are for the future? Um, well, in similar in similar instances like this, uh, and I believe I know the the project that you that you mentioned, uh, 
this can, the, the remedy for this uh, situation can take up to uh, a year and a half, two years maybe, um, especially if they want to, if they're looking to get some city approvals. Right. Um, in this case, uh, I'm going to reach out to to the post office in the next week or two and just get some just get some follow up details. But at this point in time, whether they keep it the same or change it, they're going to need to uh, they're going to need to uh, contact the planning division uh, to to both get approval for whatever they want to replant it with, but also to get a final kind of a final review, if you will. Okay. Yeah, just make sure everything's copacetic. I know the drought tolerance is important, and then also there's the watershed aspect of it, too, living as close as we do to the city. I know the Surfrider Foundation is pretty particular about monitoring, yeah. overwatering, so yeah. that's an important part of our ecology. So, um, any advice on what local residents could do to help their voices heard on concerns? about the post office or code compliance in general? Well, uh, code compliance uh, is always interested in hearing what the residents have to say. Uh, though in, in a not small number of complaints, we are actually not the enforcement agency that uh, can deal with it or that's even best suited to deal with the issue. Regardless of that, um, you know, we, we try to, we try to focus uh, the attention to as, as few resources as possible, just so that uh, people again don't get lost in a sea of of, uh, of resources. So, if anybody has a, a, an issue with the post office, by all means, contact code compliance. Okay. Um, beyond that, with the federal property, it gets a little bit. Gets a little bit interesting, uh, you know. Technically, uh, technically, their their bosses are our local representatives, and the, you know the, the White House. So uh, that's that can be a very long chain of, of people to try to you know figure things out with. Uh, if they if people don't have success getting in touch with the uh, San Clemente Postmaster. Um, they can always contact us. I have a relationship with them, and I am always more than happy to share what residents say. Uh, I do know that uh, people can contact him because he is aware of the complaints that have come in. Uh, so between code compliance and the same committee postmaster, uh, I would say those are those are two good resources to start with. Beyond that, it's anybody's game. Uh, Mike Levin is our local representative, so yeah. that might be someone to contact as well. Last question for you. Uh, what else would you like for people to know about the situation? Well, I, I think the, the number one thing I want people to know is that we are actively involved in, in dealing with this situation. Uh, code compliance has spent a, a fair amount of time uh, attempting contact, maintaining contact, Establishing time timelines with with the, uh, the post office staff uh, to get this issue resolved, and we've been doing it for years. Uh, this year was a little unique, but this is not the first. This is not the first time we've we've, uh, we've dealt with that. In this, in this regard. Great. Well, thank you, Adam, on this issue and everything that you do to try and keep our city looking good. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Anytime you have. Thank you.